the hair dryer. Nolik, are you here? Yep, I'm here. I got a cool trick to show you. What? Oh. That was real magic, dude. Took long to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, that's not the trick. It's a trick with helium. Oh, what is helium? Well, helium's a very light gas they fill balloons with, so they float in the air. That's not magic at all, you silly. Who's never watched a flying balloon? The trick's not about the balloon flying. I need to get its gas. Ugh. How can I get it down from there? Get a hair dryer. That's the way to do it. Yeah, what for? So I can show you a trick. All right. Mom, can I use the hair dryer for a minute? A hair dryer is a great simple invention. Inside a hair dryer is a fan that sucks in the air from behind it and pushes it out the front to blow your hair around and make it dry. To heat up the air, there's an electric coil inside of there. When the coil heats up, it warms up the passing air. And the hot air helps your hair dry faster. Of course, you don't have to turn on the heat setting, but then you better like that cold wind. Nolik. I'm right here. Here's the dryer. I want to see your trick. All right. Flip the switch. Now you lay the ball right into the airstream. Oh, great. The ball's flying. And now it's my turn to fly. Really? Whoa! Yeah! I'll shoot right up to the ceiling so I can grab the string and pull the balloon down. So turn off the heat and away I go. Probably because you're little and weigh like nothing. And what? Do I have to wait till I'm heavier and older to get down? I don't know. Then you'd better get my sister. She'll tell us what to do. Simka, come on out. Well, what's going on? Look. Hi there. How'd you end up on the ceiling? I was just showing off that funny hairdryer trick. I'm laughing out loud. Ha, ha, ha. I can try flipping on the hairdryer and lifting you up to Nolik. So both of us can get caught hanging up there? Well, thanks, but I don't need it. Then what do you need? Just a broom or a mop. You know how to do a trick with a mop? Uh-huh. Just make it fast. They can be quite ingenious creatures, those humans. Sometimes they figure out clever ways to use ordinary devices, like a hair dryer. Of course it can be used to dry hair, but it can also be used to dry a wet spot on clothes. And a hair dryer can even be used to remove a sticky price label. Now suppose you buy yourself a new cup that has a terribly sticky sticker that just seems impossible to peel off. Well, try warming it up with a hair dryer. The glue will dry up a bit and the label will come off easier. There's no doubt that a hair dryer can be very useful in any household. But you need to be extremely careful with it, especially in the bathroom. If water gets inside a hair dryer, there's a real risk of getting a horrible electrical shock that can seriously hurt you and destroy the hair dryer as well. to fly inside a stream of air. Good for you. Now I'll sound like a fixie. Really? Uh-huh. Huh. Watch me. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Just look. I'll breathe in one breath of helium. Isn't it bad for you? You can only breathe a little. Hey, hi there. Oh, Tom Thomas became a fixie. And that's my trick for you. Funny, huh? Oh, that's too funny. What a squeaky little voice you got there. <laughs> See, I'm already 
not a fixie. The helium stops working after just a couple seconds. <laughs> That's good. Because such a humongous fixie couldn't fit inside any machine. <laughs> the solar battery. Let's see. Three times 648. He won't get it himself. Nope. Well, I bet he will. Tom Thomas is so smart. Yeah, smart, but lazy. I'll bet you a flick in the head. Then get ready. Huh? Shh. We promise. We can't bother him during homework time. I really wish I didn't have to write this out. Why write everything on paper when you got a calculator? I knew he'd say that. Without a calculator, he can't get it. It seems like the batteries are dead. Did you see that? The calculator won't turn on, so he's gonna have to solve it by himself. What's the problem? Come on, where are the batteries here? <laughs> Simkanolik, just come out already. I can hear that you're here. Hi, Tom Thomas. Well, you can't figure out where the batteries need to go? <laughs> I don't get what's so funny. Because there are no batteries inside of this thing. What do you mean, no? Then where does the calculator, you know, get a... Where does it get electricity? Uh-huh. There's a solar battery in there. The sun turns it on? A long time ago, it was discovered by scientists that some materials produce electricity when light hits them. Sheets that are made out of these materials are called photoelectric cells. By connecting a few of these photoelectric cells together, you can build a solar battery. A solar battery in a calculator sits behind a small clear window. And when light hits the solar battery, it produces the electricity that powers the calculator. I don't see a little window anywhere on here. That's because you covered up the window with a sticker for some reason. The reason is that it looks great. Good job. It looks really great, but it can't work now. Well, farewell, sticker. I can't get it off. Then just leave it alone. Go ahead and solve the problems without the calculator. Then I'll be the one flicking you. Flicking who? Did you forget? We're the fixies, and we have to fix everything. Ah, Simka, that's a sneaky plan. It's not sneaky at all. You better find something to tear off the sticker with. Okay, how about them? take forever doing it this way. Yeah. I got an idea. Let's use this paper clip. And what's next? I'll just stick the end to the paper clip and then wrap it around. Tidish! With the help of solar batteries, we can produce electricity without burning any oil or coal. Unfortunately, these batteries aren't very powerful. A calculator can get enough energy from a small little battery. But in order to power a whole city with solar energy, you need to have power plants with huge fields full of solar batteries. And of course, it's best to build these plants where the sun shines bright and long, like out in the desert. By the way, in outer space, the sun shines very brightly, and it's never blocked by clouds. That's why all of the vehicles and satellites in space use solar energy for power, including the International Space Station, where astronauts from different countries work together. Tom Thomas! What, you guys all done? Uh-huh. Now you can go solve your problems on the calculator. But I already solved them on paper before you peeled off the sticker. Hooray! I'm the winner! Ow! That's totally unfair. If it wasn't for the sticker, you would have lost. What's going on? Nothing. Never mind. That's nothing to you? Well done, Tom Thomas. You got them all right. 
Now it's working. Look, a picture of our Nolik. Where? Where? Right there on the calculator. Oh, I got it. Zero means no, Nolik. <laughs> Good one. Paper. Hey, Tom Thomas! You're watering plants? Not only. I'm writing an essay for school. I don't get it. I have to write an essay that's called How I Take Care of Nature. Only I have to write what's true, so I'm writing what's true. Watering my plants. <laughs> oh! Chusaka! Chusaka! Come here, girl! Stop! Don't be scared! Why did you pick her up? I want to pet her a little so I can write about how well I take care of animals. Tom Thomas, I want to take care of nature too! That sounds good. And what should we be doing? We could try saving air by not breathing as often. Awesome idea! Way to go! Saving air! Let's go for it! And ready? <gasps> Humans invade nature and destroy more and more of her riches with each passing year. They extract her minerals and oil, cut down her trees, and pollute her air and water. They do all of this to produce food and all sorts of other things. It's a shame that people don't really need all these things that they produce. They often buy something and then just toss it away when it's still almost new. And then there's all the food that humans buy and just throw away. So if you want to help nature, try not to buy anything that you really don't need. And take good care of the things that you do buy. And you can be sure that we Fixies will do everything we can to make your things last as long as possible. <sighs> That's it. Now we can write it. Uh-huh. Write this. I also do my duty by saving air. A whole 20 seconds worth. You got it? What's that noise? Huh. I must have left it running when I needed some water for my plants. Tom Thomas, I think you should write that you're saving water, too. It really matters, because there's not enough of it. Nolik, that's a good idea. Let's add that. Hi there. What are you guys up to? We're writing about how Tom Thomas protects nature. It's a homework assignment for school. Uh-huh. I've already written how I'm watering the plants, I'm good to living creatures, how I'm saving air and water, and how I'm conserving carrots, too. I never want to eat them, especially in soup. Not eating your vegetables? No way. Doesn't count. You sure of that? Mm-hmm. Why did you rip your paper out? You won't let me say how I'm conserving carrots, right? So I'll have to rewrite it. Ah, uh, you're not taking care of nature. What? Where'd you get that idea from? That's all I'm doing. No. When you keep on throwing your paper out, it means you're not taking care of trees out there. What trees are you talking about? Didn't you know humans make paper out of trees? Humans make paper by cutting down trees and shredding the pieces into chips. The chips are then placed in water, chemicals are added to the solution, and then it is all mixed together into a mushy, watery substance called pulp. Next, the water is drained from the pulp and with the help of huge rotating drums is flattened into thin sheets of paper. So you see, to make new paper, humans have to keep cutting down trees. And you should know this. 
If every person on the planet would use one less sheet of paper, you know, they'd save a million trees all together. You sure? I'm sure. And now that you know about trees and paper, what are you going to do next? Hey, you know, I've decided not to write any essay for school. You, you what? what? I want to help save more trees by using less paper. That's all. Oh, Tom Thomas, you're my hero. Ah. The alarm. Hey there, I'm back. Yoo-hoo! Wait, my chocolate bunny! It was standing right here! What's this, a dog? Not that one, another one! I had two bunnies. I just got them as a present. You had two bunnies? Are you sure of that? Of course! You think I don't know my ones from my twos? Huh. Then someone stole one. Unless, uh, unless... <gasps> you went and ate it yourself! Me? How come I don't remember anything about it? Maybe you're a sleepwalker. What is a sleepwalker? Someone who gets up from his bed at night without waking up. He crosses the room, eats one of his chocolate bunnies, and doesn't remember a thing in the morning. But in the morning, the bunny was still there. Yeah? Huh. How about... Your mother? Could she have taken it? She doesn't like when you're eating too much candy. No, she doesn't. She says that candy's terrible for my teeth. And so, to save your teeth from these sweets, she snuck quietly into your room, snatched one of the rabbits, and ate it. But Mom's the one who gave them to me as a present. And so why would she take it? Yeah? Then I just don't know. Well, I do. I think it was your father. He wouldn't steal it. We know he's allergic to chocolate. <laughs> Next, he'll tell us how the fish took it. You know, I always thought there was something fishy about those fish. No doubt about it. They stole the bunny. <laughs> uh-huh. And then they hid it in their aquarium. <laughs> Funny. You know what, Tom Thomas? You need to protect that other chocolate hair. Exactly. It has to be eaten right away. Now, before it disappears. Just wait a little. You don't have to eat it. Let's think of something else. Of course. We need a security alarm. Need what? The alarm was invented to keep houses, cars, and other valuable things safe and secure. The simplest alarm is a siren or light bulb that is connected by wires to a door or window. When someone tries to open a door that has an alarm on it, the alarm goes off, making the siren howl and the light flash. Alarms can also be set up to call the police if they go off. Super! But where can we get ourselves a security alarm? You have an electronic construction kit, remember? You're right. Then bring it over here. Nolik, help me! is the Fixies victory call. When a job is well done and we Fixies are proud of our work, we exclaim, Tadish! And raise up our hand with our thumb and first two fingers sticking out. You want to know what it means? It's very simple. Fixies love solving problems and fixing things that are broken. And do you know what you need to do to solve a problem? First, you need to find out what's broken. Second, understand why it broke. And third, repair what's broken so it works again. So do what the Fixies do and first, find it. Second, understand it. And third, fix it. Tadish! <laughs> it really is a great word and it sounds funny, but we Fixies surely like it a lot. Well, Tom Thomas, turn on the alarm. You sure the alarm will work? I'm sure, without a doubt. 
Why are you stealing my chocolate? The vacuum. What's the point of cleaning up toys? You're just gonna go take them out again later. You said it. Tom Thomas, if you're done cleaning up, go and eat your lunch. Okay, be there soon. No, look, you wait for me. Uh huh. Oh. He calls this cleaning up. my mom. She started vacuuming. sucked into the vacuum? Oh, no! Did he stay back there? Tom Thomas, what's the matter? <sighs> Mom, I can, I can, I can finish vacuuming you. I'm, I mean, for you. All right, I'll go clean the dishes. No lick, no lick. small and unnoticeable. But if dust gets inside machines and appliances, it's a disaster just waiting to happen. It can keep gears from turning properly. Dust can make appliances overheat. And if dust gets onto electric contacts, it can create a short circuit that can even cause a fire. That's why we fixies have to constantly clean the insides of appliances from dust. Even though a lot of us are allergic to it, he, he, ha, chew! If only people would just dust a little more often than they do right now! Ha, 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 chew! At least people could dust more on the outside. That would make our work so much easier. And their equipment would break a whole lot less often. Well, did you find 
find him? No! It's all my fault. My mom asked me to clean up my toys, and I didn't just do it like she asked. Now it sucked him in because of me. And I already promised to clean up my toys. And why are you sneezing? To keep you company. So you'd feel a little better. <laughs> the robot. Did I already tell you what I'm hoping you'll get me for my birthday present? <laughs> yes, honey. Only a thousand times or so. A Robotozoid R300 would just be the greatest. With Mega Vision, I want it. I really do. <sighs> I do. Well, tomorrow you'll find out. But now it's time to sleep, Tom Thomas. Wow, that is one great present. And we got Tom Thomas absolutely zero for his birthday. Uh, we're just terrible friends. So, how does this robot work? Okay, so let's give this a try, shall we? First, we'll take a walk. And how does he have any idea where the robot's going? I can tell you. One of the robot's eyes is a video camera. The robot sends the picture to the screen on the controller so the player can see where the robot is going. Yeah! And that's just one thing they know how to do. A robot is a smart machine that can do very difficult or dangerous work for humans. With its strong metal arms, a robot can move heavy objects or put together parts to build cars and other machines. Robots are often sent into outer space or to the bottom of the ocean to help scientists. There are also robots that can understand what people are saying. And robots that can talk and even make jokes, just like people. I've got it. Now let's turn you around. Uh, what was that? Uh, look, you know... <gasps> he destroyed him! No, like, stop! You were playing with that, right? You think Tom will notice? Ugh, I know what you're doing all night. I'm off to bed. I'll get him to work. I'll stay up until I do. Simka, let's try and... No, we're gonna need some help. Robotazoid R300, I can't believe it! Uh, uh, hmm? 
Well, happy birthday to you, Tom Thomas. I'm sorry, Tom Thomas. Last night, your robot, you know, I broke it. Dad, it works perfectly. Don't you see? I'm so proud of you. You fixed it. <laughs> I couldn't fix it at all. I tried everything. Oh, you want to tell me that the robot fixed itself? <laughs> what a joker. <laughs> Mom, Dad, thanks so much. I love it. And how about thanking us? I should have known it was you who fixed the robot. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Yay! The nightlight. They're very close. I can feel them. That's all. You've had enough monsters. It's not good to watch these kinds of movies before bed. Mom, Mom, really, I'm not scared. Let me watch the end, would you? I told you, that's all. Well, good night, honey. Close. I feel them. <sighs> Can you believe it? He's sleeping, and he didn't turn the light off. Yeah, and so? And so, if every human went to sleep with a light on, there wouldn't be enough electricity to go around. Hup! Everyone can probably remember walking into an empty room with the lights turned on. Or finding a TV on that nobody's watching. One little light or TV might not seem like much, but just imagine how many people are living on this Earth. Well, if everybody forgot to turn off the lights or TV when they weren't being used, the amount of wasted electricity would equal the amount of energy produced by a hundred power plants. And each of these power plants needs freight cars of coal or rivers of oil to keep running. And all that fuel has to be extracted and burned constantly. Now do you see how expensive burning a light bulb is for the Earth? So don't forget to turn off electrical appliances when you're not using them. It's so easy. Uh, who turned off the light? I feel them. I feel them. I feel them. I... Look! What's up with him? I think he's playing sleep hockey. Looks like his position is left out. Ha ha. Anyway, he should get a penalty for wasting electricity. <gasps> Monsters! <laughs> hey! What do you think we are? Hockey pucks? Nolik, Simka, forgive me. Who did you think we were? Mm, monsters. Huh. Well, I see how you could mistake Simka for one, but obviously not me. <laughs> Tom Thomas, what are you doing? Why are you sleeping with the light on? I was so dumb. I watched this monster movie on TV before bed. Now I'm scared to sleep without the light on. And that dumb old monster flick, why were you watching it? I felt like getting scared. Ah! You're great at getting scared. Keep quiet, or we'll wake up your mom and dad. How am I going to fall asleep now? Here's a good idea. You can use a nightlight. A nightlight is a little light that humans who don't like to sleep in the dark use in their rooms. The nightlight has a dim glow. That's because it works with a special kind of light bulb that uses very little electricity. These kinds of light bulbs are called energy efficient. <laughs> That's called
hard to say. <laughs> and you can find nightlights that use such low energy bulbs that they can work off of a battery. But you know there isn't a nightlight here. Huh. How would you get by without us? Tonight, I'm here to help you. I'm gonna be your nightlight. Look, right there. There's our lampshade. Thanks so much. You really are a friend indeed, Nolik. It was easy. Just go to sleep. Nolik, ugh. do you know any good stories? I know one about a big meat grinder. Nah, no way. You'd better tell me a story about a nice, kind fixie. Ah, I know a good one. And here's how it goes. Grandpoos was working inside of a very big clock. Actually, the clock wasn't that big. <sighs> I'm not sure if it was Grandpoos, but it was a clock, I think. The magnifying glass. Case number one. Let's begin. Well, well. I see evidence of the criminal. The criminal's fingerprints, to be exact. He won't get away with it. Why do you think she's just looking at us instead of chasing us? Oh, maybe she can't see us and we're invisible. Then how come I see you? Simka, Nolik, be careful. Don't destroy the tracks. What kind of tracks? Whose tracks are they? Solve a crime. A crime? What kind? Someone stole a wing from this plane. But I'm on the trail. Take a look at that fingerprint. I'm looking. Well, and so? Each fingerprint is unique. So if you can find fingerprints, that means you have a good chance to find out who left them. Class! It's been known for quite a long time that all humans have their own unique fingerprints. It's true! No two people have the exact same fingerprints, and this fact helps the police catch criminals. It starts by finding fingerprints at the scene of the crime. Then the police compare those fingerprints with the fingerprints of someone who may have committed the crime. If they match, they found the criminal. This method is called dataloscopy. Besides catching criminals, fingerprints can also be used to replace ordinary keys. When you press your finger against a special electronic lock, the lock recognizes your fingerprint, and then it's, please come on in. By the way, unlike humans, we fixies don't leave fingerprints anywhere. And that's why even the police can't find us. Now we'll put a dog on the scent of the criminal. Shusaka, sniff. Pick of the trail. Now go find. Hey, what's wrong? Chusaka's broken. We've got to fix her then. How? She's not a vacuum cleaner. She's a real live dog. Fixies know how to fix it all. Not true. Almost all. The first thing we have to do is a thorough inspection. Let's see now. Her eyes are looking quite healthy. Good. Tails in one piece. Ears are clean? Yeah. Tongue, rosy pink. Tom Thomas, stand her up on all four feet. No, paws, I mean. Uh-huh. Chusaka. <laughs> Go on, you're fine. Now I understand. Here's what's out of order. It's her right paw. But I can't see what's wrong. I wonder if something's broken on the inside. Wait. Maybe something really small is stuck in her paw there. Tom Thomas, we need your lens. Here. In order to examine a small object, you need a lens. A magnifying lens is a special piece of glass that is thicker in the middle than on the sides. It bends the light that passes through it. And that is why if you put this kind of lens between your eyes and something small, it looks like the thing got bigger. If you put two lenses in a frame, you get a pair of glasses. And if you add a handle to the lens, you get a magnifying glass. There it is, a splinter. It's glass, I think. Looks like it. Uh, you're right. 
It's possible it's from the lamp in the hallway. It broke yesterday, and I guess not every little piece got swept up. Chusaka, hey there. You're all better now. Looks like we fixed her. Tanish, she's all repaired and working. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have cured an ungrateful dog. Simka, no, look, here it is. The wing that was lost. Yeah, that's great, only you still have to figure out who hid it underneath the bed there. Yeah, you still need to match the fingerprints. The fingerprints on the wing are the same as on the plane. But whose are they? And did you check your fingerprints out? Huh, all the fingerprints are mine. So I guess it was really my own fault. I just lost it somehow. <laughs> so it turns out that you were the criminal? Hooray! The crime's been solved! <laughs> and you, Tom Thomas, are the criminal! <laughs> Katya's coming over, so we can do our homework. I need some strawberries. Is she gonna bring the strawberries with her? You got it. And my job's to supply the whipped cream. They're so good together. Whipped cream? Do you have any? I'll go and check. Wait for me! <gasps> Suka, what do they make cream from? It's made from milk, and the milk you can get from a cow. The cow jumps up and down like you, so the cream can get whipped up. Really? I'm joking, Nolik. I looked everywhere. We've got regular cream, but there isn't whipped cream. No problem. We can whip some up right now. Cream is thick milk with a lot of fat. If you want to make whipped cream, you need to cool down the cream, add some sugar, and then beat this mixture very well. This adds tiny air bubbles that turn the cream into a delicious white fluffy foam. But it's important not to overdo it. Or instead of getting fluffy, the cream will start getting thicker and thicker until it turns into rich, creamy butter. How are we gonna whip it up? Look, there's a whisk. No! Hold on! How's that? It's not working. Maybe we need to use a different bowl or something. Do you think that a bottle would work? Hmm, that's a really good idea. Now I don't have to worry about spilling this cream anymore. Shake it with both hands. That's all. I'm just too tired. The cream looks exactly the same as when you started. You didn't try hard enough. Oh, really? Then try whipping it yourself. I got it. That's who's going to help us. Chusaka? Yeah, awesome. Bring it down. A little more. Perfect. Open it up. <laughs> Yeah? But why can't you? What a shame. It's fine. Come on over anyway. Oh, you can't reach us. You can't reach us. Whew. Whew, I'm so tired. Whew. 
I'm sure that at least we got the cream whipped up. Oh, see that, Zuka? There's no cream left. Just some yellow stuff. It's butter, I'm sure. We overdid it. People make so many different things out of milk, like cream or butter or frosting for cakes and cupcakes. With dry milk, sugar, and boiling water, you can make condensed milk. And if you make it cold, brr, you get ice cream. And if the milk gets sour, no problem. Humans make all sorts of foods out of sour milk, like yogurt, sour cream, kefir, and buttermilk. If you drain off the extra liquid from sour milk, you'll have cottage cheese. And by boiling milk a special way, you can make all sorts of different cheeses. There are so many kinds of cheeses made throughout the world that it's hard to even count them all. And even certain kinds of chocolate can't be made without milk. You must agree that plain old ordinary milk is just one super magical, extraordinary thing. <laughs> It's just awful, guys. What, Katya's not coming over? She's coming over, just without the strawberries. She didn't know that her grandmother had already used up all of them to make some jam. So you're telling us that we don't need any whipped cream? Right. Katya's bringing a cake, and she said that we'll need butter. She wants to make frosting out of it. Butter? I don't know if we have any. We got plenty. The Cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Tom Thomas, aren't you done yet? Yeah, show us your surprise and quit drawing. But this is the surprise. So make yourselves comfortable. Quiet on the set and action. <laughs> You should put a huge bump on his head. It's just like a cartoon that you drew him there. <laughs> he did draw us a real cartoon there. Oh, right. Real cartoons, they only show them on television. But they make them exactly the same way. Animation is made with many, many pictures called frames. Each one of the frames is a little bit different from the one that comes right before it. For example, a character can lift his arm up a little bit at a time. And then, if you watch the frames very quickly, one right after the other, it looks like the character is really moving. And that's how cartoons are made. And you know what? To make one minute of a cartoon, you might have to draw more than a thousand frames. Oh, wow. I'm not patient enough for that. It's no big deal that your cartoon's short. Especially since it's funny. <laughs> Tom Thomas, who is this kooky guy you drew here? You're just joking, Nolik. You don't recognize yourself? So this is supposed to be me on here? Did you already forget what happened to you this morning? Simka, you're it. You can't catch me. <sighs> I'm too fast for you. Uh, oh. ay 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 <laughs> You weren't too fast for the pole. Ah, oh, Simka. You didn't have to tell him about that. Real sisters don't treat their brothers like that. Oof. And your cartoon's not funny at all. No, Lick. Don't go. It's okay. He just needs to sulk for a while. While he's gone, there's something I want to show you. Do you have a cartoon you can put on the TV? I have plenty. What should I do? Let's watch it again, but now I want to show you the same cartoon a frame at a time. Here, take a look. This is a frame, and here's another and another. Isn't that cool? Uh-huh. So cool. And then back at regular speed, there's 25 frames every second. What should I do? It's magical. Simka, you know, I feel awful for Nolik. Yeah, I feel awful, too. There are many different ways of making animation. 
Hand-drawn animation is, of course, drawn by hand. And stop motion is made like this. The animators pose the model and take a picture of it. Then they move the model a little bit and take another picture. And they do it again and again and again until there are enough frames to make the characters look like they're moving very smoothly across the screen. Another popular style of animation is clay animation. In these films, everything is built and rebuilt out of modeling clay. But today, most of the cartoons are made on a computer. At first, they make a computer model of a character, a sort of digital puppet. After the models are built, they are colored and animated to move. This is the kind of animation that's used in the Fixie cartoons. Tom Thomas, what are you doing? Are you drawing a new cartoon? Nah, I started fixing the old one, so Nolik will stop being angry. Good, keep drawing, and I'll go and get him. Nolik! I'm not here! Nolik, forgive me! Please don't be so mad. There's a cartoon to watch. I've already seen your stupid cartoon. So what'd you do now? Put a huge bump on my head? Not a chance. I did it all over again. I'm sure you'll love it. You sure of that? All right, go ahead. Show me your cartoon. Quiet on the set and action. Go. Now that cartoon I really liked. Good, because I'm all out of paper. Well, I think the first cartoon was funnier. <laughs> Whoa, but this one's much better, of course. Yeah. Mm -mm. The cell phone. Hmm. Hey, Nolik, come on out and play. He's not allowed. He was punished. Can you tell me what you did? I grabbed a Pac-Man and I forgot to ask. How long do you have to sit there? Until Mossy and Papoos come home from their boo 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 boozness. What did you say? Business, a work trip. They're inside of your father's cell phone right now. They were busy doing repairs in there when he left the house for work. <laughs> Do you know the reason why a mobile phone is also called a cell phone? Mobile phones are connected to other mobile phones with the help of special radio stations that are put on top of towers and building roofs. Each one of these stations sends signals to its own area below, and each area is called a cell. A mobile phone works anywhere it can find a nearby station that it can connect to. So as long as there is a station nearby, you can talk as much as you want. You can even move from one cell to another. And without you ever knowing it, your mobile phone will switch from one station to another one. So your conversation can keep on going, even if you're running after a bus or riding on it. Tom Thomas, hello. There you go, my dad came back home already. Hi dad, how are you? Can you believe it? It looks like I lost my phone. What do you mean you lost it? Where? I have no idea. So what? I'm gonna have to sit in here forever now? You? Our parents are missing. The phone stopped shaking a while now. We're probably already at home. Uh, uh. Not home to me. How can we ever get home to our children? Where's my Masia? Don't whine. We'll work something out. Don't worry. I got a phone. Let's give them a ring. They can't answer your call. But what if they answer us? Call them, Tom Thomas. I... Don't even think it. We're not allowed to talk to humans. We're not going to talk to them. We're just going to listen. We need to close the contacts. It's no use. Oh, they answered the phone. Let me talk. Papus, Masia, it's me, Simka. Simka? Yeah, Masia, where are you? In the telephone. The phone 
food part is not what she's asking you. Oh, it smells a lot like gasoline in here. Ask your father, was he anywhere around gasoline? Dad! Dad, did you go anywhere today where it smells like gasoline? Gasoline? Uh, I had to go to the gas station. That's the place where your telephone disappeared. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, I've got... Intuition. Intuition? Intuition, huh? You know what? I'll go check. Come and check out our Fixie ringtone. Telephone is... Just incredible. You see? I found it. Son, you're one clairvoyant. I didn't notice when it fell out of my pocket back at the gas station. My children. Oh, my Marcia. Papus. Oh, my sweeties. <laughs> so, uh, just by any chance, you think you might happen to know where I can find that nice watch I lost? No. Don't worry. There's no rush. Just use that intuition you've got. Uh? <laughs> <laughs> what? The ship in a bottle. Simka, Nolik, here, take a look at this. Oh, wow! Awesome! Where did you get this from? From one of the shelves in Dad's office. He's got lots of cool stuff in there. That's cool. I'll be the captain. This is like a totally real sailing ship with masts, cordage, and everything. And how can it all get in there through such a little hole? A ship in a bottle is a real miracle. Do you want me to tell you the secret of how it gets inside? It's like so. All of the ship's masts are collapsible. Before the boat is put into the bottle, the masts are folded down and pressed against the ship's body so it's small enough to fit through the bottle's neck. And once the ship is inside the bottle, the masts and sails are opened back up by pulling on a thread. Hands on deck! There's a giant octopus starboard! I'm an octopus, huh? Oh, look out! Brave sailors like us! We're not afraid of storms! Tom Thomas, be careful! Hey! Oh, ah! Uh. Did it break? No, it's all Tadish. It's not close to Tadish. Take a look how this mask broke. Whoa! Uh, what have I done? Don't worry, we can fix it. Get some glue, okay? Here's some super glue I found. This is the kind that'll keep things stuck forever. No, Lick! Come and help! Phew! Phew! This stuff is so stinky! Danish! Ooh. That's better, thank you, guys. We sailors ugh, never let a friend down. No, Lick! You gotta get out! You'll get sick from that stinky air! I can't get loose. I... I got stuck. Hello there, Tom Thomas. Uh, what are you doing with the ship from my collection in here? I just... wanted to give it some air. Tom Thomas, you know that taking things out of my office is just not allowed. <laughs> hey, look! What an interesting cabin boy. I never noticed him before. I'll take it, Dad, and put it back on the shelf, okay? <laughs> Who just sneezed? Uh, I did. Achoo! Well, all right then. Do your homework, and please don't set foot in my office again. 
Simka, where are you going? To save Nolik. I'll come with you. You're not allowed inside that office. Your father said no. Sweetheart, your soup's getting cold. I'm coming. Nolik, where are you? Simka, why is everything turning? Because you inhaled the fumes from that stinky glue. <laughs> Ah, oh, phew! Everybody knows how strong the smell of paints, cleaning fluids, and glues can be. But the nasty smell is not where the real danger lies. Breathing in the fumes from paint or glue can give you a terrible headache. Or even worse, it can make you faint. And that's why when the Fixies need to paint or glue something, they're supposed to put on a safety mask called a respirator. And humans need to remember to wear masks just like Fixies when they're working with fumes. And never forget that the fumes from glue and paint can be flammable. It only takes one spark and kaboom! There can be an explosion. So always remember to have plenty of clean air moving through any room where you are gluing or painting anything. Uh, hurry up. Uh. Hang in there, Nolik. I'll get you out of there. Claus is gonna come over. He'll say, one, two, three, lights light up the tree. Then we'll get our presents. The real Santa Claus? Yeah, for sure. The real Santa Claus will come to you? You'll see for yourself. He comes to me every year. Okay, so let's practice. One, two, two three, three, lights light up the tree. Huh? Oh, the string light's burned out. And we don't have another one. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is almost here. Is the tree ready? No, not quite yet. Oh no, oh no, what are we gonna do? I'll be right back. Tom Thomas, what do you think? Will Santa Claus give you any presents if there aren't any lights on the tree? No way, it's not right without the light. It just wouldn't be magical. Papus, Masia. Santa Claus is about to come to Tom Thomas, but the string lights on the tree, they all burned out. They all burned out? Really? <laughs> the bulbs in a string light are connected together like a chain with a piece of wire between each bulb. When you turn on a string light, electricity flows through the wire, lighting up each of the bulbs along its way. But if any of the bulbs gets burned out, the circuit will be broken and the electricity will stop flowing. That means one bad bulb will make all of the lights go out. So if you want to fix a string light with a bad bulb, the answer is really simple. Just find the bad one and put a new one in. So do we have a spare bulb around here? I'll get it for you. I know where it is. Tom Thomas, hold up Santa Claus for a while. We need a little time to find and replace that bad light for you. I'll try to. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is already here. Ho, ho, ho! I got one thing to do. So, let's find the bad bulb. Okay, Papoose, let's go! Hmm, this one's working. Maybe this one burned out. Nope. And that? It lights fine. Santa Claus is getting very hot out here. Hold on. Simka, what's up? 
We checked all the bulbs, but couldn't find a bad one. Huh. I guess this year won't be magical. Okay, Mom, just come on in. Ho, ho, ho. Hello there, Tom Thomas. So tell me now, have you been good all year? Huh, why aren't the lights on the tree burning? So then let's say it together. One, two, three. Ow! Papoose, I found one more bulb. Here's the one that's not working. One, one two, two, three. three. Light, light, light up, up the, the tree. tree. Huh, now we need to replace this bulb with a new one. So where's Masia? Show your light, O oh tree. Hooray! Hooray! Ho, 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 ho. Whew, that was really hard. I see you already got it shining. But where did you manage to find a new bulb? We got Papus to act as the bulb. <gasps> Tidish! Tidish! Ah, uh, what a hero. Pull me up so we can put this bulb in. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. Our spirits light up. Whoa! And on the tree. <laughs> yeah! And on the tree. On Christmas ah, Eve. Nice box. The lights burn brighter. Every year, but no one is expecting. From some place that no one could conceive. On Christmas Eve, on Christmas Eve, the clock it seems on Christmas Eve is ticking slower. And suddenly, on Christmas Eve, a miracle on Christmas Eve, no one believes on Christmas Eve comes out of nowhere. Every year, but no one is expecting from some place that no one. The Magic Wand. Oh, Tom Thomas, how did you get here? It was a piece of cake. I just got this cool magic wand as a gift, see? Wow! There's no such thing as a magic wand. I don't believe you. You just wait. Any wish is the wand's command. Check it out. Today I want my school to be closed. Golden wish, Tadish! Tom Thomas, your teacher from school just gave me a call. She said your school has totally disappeared. How odd. So I'm not going to school? Well, how? Instead of school, we'll go to the park. Hooray! Real magic. Oh, it's so great. No, there's no magic. They're only illusions. I don't know what illusions are. It's when what we think we're seeing is not what is actually happening. <laughs> Have you ever seen a magician pull a rabbit out of an empty hat? Do you think it's magic? No, it is only an illusion. In reality, the rabbit's hidden inside the table that the magician puts his hat on. The lid of the hat is made with a secret hatch. And when the magician puts his arm inside the hat, he grabs the rabbit from the table below and ta-da! How every magic trick works may be a secret, but every illusion does have an explanation. I'm telling you, this wand's totally magical. Right now, I can make a rabbit appear out of this trash can for you. Golden Wish Tadish! Oh, that wasn't the idea. Looks like a dog to me. Wait, one more time. Golden Wish Tadish! Hmm. Golden Wish Tadish! Tom Thomas, will you cut it out? One Chusaka was already enough for us, and now there's three! <laughs> Little 
Astro Kids. Wait, I'll make you bigger now. Golden Wish Tadish. to chase little kids around? Wow, I'm huge! I'm as huge as Tom Thomas! I'm huge! Oh! No, like, be careful! Ah! Ah! Uh. How can you live being this tall? It's so inconvenient. And I thought it was tough when you were so tiny. Tom Thomas, are you ready? Hey, why do we have three dogs all of a sudden? Oh, my word. I was dreaming that someone had given me a magic wand. And then I had to make it big, see? And, and, and my mom saw you. That's awful. That would have made me scream. I wish I had a magic wand of my very own. We Fixies aren't ones to believe in magic, but we do believe in what humans can do. Because humans often work wonders. For ages, flying in the sky seemed to be an impossible dream. But today, anyone can take off to the sky in an airplane. It used to be that humans thought that only magic could take them to the moon. But now astronauts have already walked on its surface. In fairy tales, people were able to see and talk to each other through a magic mirror. But today, we have the internet and telephones we can use. Refrigerators, televisions, automobiles, computers. There are so many things that humans have created. Wondrous things that they used to only be able to dream about. Like a miracle from a fairy tale. A magic wand? Why do you need it? First, I'd skip school today. Tom Thomas, are you ready? I told you, we're going to the park. And what about school? I'll skip it? Hmm. Good joke. Could this be a dream, too? No, it's just that today is Sunday, and that's the magic of it. <laughs> the zipper. Hey, Nolan, look. Why did Tom Thomas go to sleep like that? Maybe it was some kind of homework for one of his classes. Uh-huh, gym class homework. Good morning. Good morning. Hi there. You're looking good. My parents just bought it for me. Isn't it a cool jacket? And what? You slept in it all night? Yeah, once I tried it on, I didn't want to take it off, and I fell asleep in it. Yeah. Life's never boring with you around. Oh, I think the zipper got stuck. And so what? You can leave your coat on no problem. You're about to go to school, right? And do you think I could sit in my class like this? How could I have broken the zipper? Don't worry. You haven't broken it. Not yet. Here is a simple zipper. It is made with two rows of small teeth that pass through a slider. The slider has two holes on the top and only one hole on the bottom. When we pull the slider up along the zipper, the teeth grab onto each other and the two rows join together into one. And zip! The zipper is closed. To open it, all you need to do is pull the slider in the opposite direction. Then the teeth will come apart. But on mine, they're stuck together. And now what? What do people do in the morning? Do what they do. Exercise. And I'll have time to think it over. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and, and then what about me? Uh, go exercise, too. One, two, three, and four. And one, one two, two, three, four. four. One, one, two, two three, three, four. And one, four. two, one. three, four. Simka, come on, think of something. I'm sweating already. Soon, okay? Go get washed up in the meantime. Whew. Do you think I could help you think? 
I think not. I think you'd be better off washing. How's it going, Tom Thomas? Did she think of anything yet? What? Did she think of anything yet? Ah, gotcha. Nope, she hasn't thought of anything so far. <sighs> it's so hot. Just pretend you're a polar scientist. They always work in their parkas. And you know what? I'll be the penguin. Hey, where are you going? Uh, I can't take it anymore. All right, just sit right here, and I'll try to find the problem. <laughs> you see? That polar scientist game's funny, huh? <laughs> That's not it. It's Simcoe. <laughs> She's tickling so hard. Stop squirming. And you stop tickling me. Aha! Uh -huh. So that's why it won't open all the way. It's only a piece of thread stuck in there. Pull the slider up. <laughs> Tiddish! You can unzip it now. <gasps> Thanks so much. Here it is, a thread. That's what the whole problem was. You're kidding. So I've been sweating because of some piece of nothing? In technology, every little thing matters. I remember when scientists built one of the first computers around 60 years ago. It was a giant machine. It filled up several rooms and had more than a million parts. It was a technological wonder. But all of a sudden, this technological wonder went kaboom and broke, and no one understood why. The computer just stopped working, and that was that. The scientists were going crazy. They couldn't find the problem. Turns out that this huge computer broke because a little butterfly had flown inside the computer and got stuck in between some contacts. Yes, it's true. This huge machine went crazy because of a little butterfly. And that's how it goes. So you see, every little thing really does matter. Tom Thomas, breakfast is ready. What are you doing in your jacket? It's because I was playing Polish scientist. Hmm. Simka, what took you so long to figure it out? I just... Just thought it would be funny to see Tom Thomas do his exercises and brush his teeth in his coat, that's all. That was your plan? Well, yeah. Can I joke around a bit? 